I think we can sort of divide them into two categories. We see both commercial regulatory challenges and we see non-commercial sort of public sector regulatory challenges. In the commercial sector, there's a lack of financial incentives that often come down to patents and data exclusivities and things like that, which for, especially for generic drugs, means that there's no or very few incentives for commercial companies to undertake that repurposing, even though they, they might know that their own drugs have new uses that could help alleviate patient symptoms and diseases. Um, so there's some of the key issues there, and one in particular is a problem known as cross-label use, where a generic drug um, that would be provided by a competitor could be used for the new use produced by the originated company that proved the new use and has the regulatory authorization. On the public sector side, or the non-commercial side, we see different incentives and different problems. So in the public sector, we actually see um, lots of doctors and scientists um, really interested in new uses and actually actively exploring them. But we have a problem with collecting all that data, running clinical trials, the design of the clinical trials. And then one of the big ones, even if you were to, to produce all of that data, then to actually get an authorization for that new use. Um, so there'd be no commercial sponsor because they're no, not interested. And so we have this situation where you might have the data, but actually you can't get the regulatory authorization through the FDA or whoever that is. The, there's several barriers as we sort of outlined before um, with regards to uh, collecting data, analyzing that data for the new uses. And we also see a, a bit of a problem in the sense that there's, if we concentrate on the idea of the public sector repurposing, we see people who are interested in this all around the world, but they don't often have the facilities or the time or the funding to get together to address those. And so one of the things that we see with a public-private partnership like the CDRC is that actually it's operating as this beacon drawing everyone in. And this meeting over these few days is a good example of that. We have an opportunity to, show, to share ideas, to share data, and to pool resources to overcome some of those problems. I think one of the other things too that um, public-private partnerships can do is because this idea of uh, public sector repurposing or non-commercial repurposing is relatively new, this private or any public-private partnership can actually sort of test drive the system, find out where the flaws are and to advocate for changes and things like that as well. And we see the CDRC doing that as well. We, we group together to identify these problems, we write papers or and you know we talk about continuing efforts to eventually lobby for changes as well. Real world data is, I think, one of the key missing parts of the repurposing sort of jigsaw puzzle. Um, we know all the data is out there, but the collection and analysis of it is critical because it can show us several things. One is that there's these new uses that we didn't appreciate. You can pick that up from some of the data. You can also um, as we've sort of seen some people doing now, is to actually use some of that real world data to actually substitute for clinical trials. And so we can accelerate um, identifying, improving new uses. So real world data is critical. And again, the CDS here is already doing these things. Um, you know, we just attended a great talk on you know, piloting these types of ideas, which is I think something the, the group should be doing. What other things could we do? Well, there's other forms of data that's already been looked at by most of the groups around the world working on this. Um, we see clinical trials data, and we also see um, looking at literature. So lots of physicians will often get together and write up about their potential new uses that they're looking at. Maybe the one piece of data that 
we haven't spoken about too much is the idea of sort of in silico repurposing, which is the idea, I suppose, looking at real world data is in silico, but in silico repurposing, looking at uh, binding sites and chemical structure. So there's other groups um, and papers that I've read where people can look at, they can model the structure of various chemical compounds and binding sites that they could bind to and how those binding sites are linked to different diseases. And so it's more or less predicting drugs that we know how they could actually affect other diseases through this sort of pure chemical analysis, in silico chemical analysis. That's going forward and perhaps that's another piece of the jigsaw puzzle that could come in. But I suspect it's probably just as complicated as looking at real world data. So it's very much a case of easier said than done.